<laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. This is George Deloach, and this is the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Critique. And I am glad you're here, and we are back running again. Boy, it is really nice to be back. We're on the Thursday time slot, and I'm going to try to hold to that. As you guys know, I, you know, I, I had a couple of health challenges. It's a, really a problem getting old. Don't ever do it, <laughs> you know. But uh, those health challenges are over, and we're back at it again. Well, it has been an interesting week, and uh, I am uh, really excited about the future of everything. We're going to tailor things a little bit different here in Camera Artist Guild now. I'm limiting the critique to only five a week, so I pick five images to go over, maybe a sixth one every now and then, but I need to keep the broadcast short. And then I'm going to try to bring a couple of tips on photography, both on the business side of photography and on the creation side of photography. because. Both of them go hand in hand. One without the other is not going to get you to where you want to go. Now, there are those of you who are amateurs, uh, and that's fabulous. And I, I am really thrilled because you're the purists. You're the ones who do it just for the love of the art form. And then there's those of us who are pros, both advanced, beginning, and some of them are just working on a side hustle. And there's always things that we can learn and tricks and techniques that will help us advance our business. Together we're going to lift the quality of photography amongst the, our community to its highest level. And uh, at least that is, that's my commitment. Let's take a look at a couple of the things. Now one posing is one thing that people have asked for. And I, I don't know whether there are natural posers or not. I'm a poser. I'm not a natural poser. Posing has always given me the, the troubles through my entire career. I have been around this business uh, 50 years and uh, I still, not struggle, but I still can learn things on posing. There are a couple of great resources out there if you can find them. There is a guy by the name of Monty Zucker who used, Ibani Zucker and Frank Criccio were both phenomenal posing people. Uh, they're uh, no longer with us, they passed on, but they could just take a person and move their body into the exact pleasant place. Now there are pleasant ways of posing the human body and ways to cover up flaws and uh, you know, take somebody who's a little bit more rounder and make them look slimmer. There are masculine pose and feminine pose and I'm not gonna go into it all right now, but let it be known I'm working on it and I'm gonna point you into, uh, in a couple of directions. Let's jump over here to uh, Photoshop and get going. We are back up now and the first image that we're gonna take a look at is uh, Rob Williams. And Rob, I don't know where you found this model, but she sure is killer. I, I just love her look. That's one of the things that just uh, really attracted me to this image. Now, there are, there are some work that you could do on posing. And you'll benefit from, now you're, there's several poses. I picked this one. Uh, the other poses, she is kind of straddling the chair. And there are times, it's a, that's a more masculine pose, there are times when you would use that pose, but she would be more casually dressed because it's a casual, in your face, kind of like female doing a, a, a masculine pose. So you gotta be propped just right to carry that off. And this one's a little bit off from that, so work on your pose. The second thing, uh, love her hair, love her hair, but you got a conflict of tones right there. Now maybe that's what you wanted, and you did pull off detail in the in the blouse, and you got the background, and you got her hair, but the hair and the background are so close, uh, color-wise, you she almost melts into the background, especially over here, camera left over on this side. It doesn't go completely, I can see it. Now you will see easily the differentiation between the hair and the background because you created the image and you were there. But other people looking at it, 
it may benefit uh, some to run with a darker background. Uh, I saw your setup, your behind the scenes photograph. So if it was at all possible and uh, you couldn't do it any other way, you could move her farther off the background. If you double her distance from the background, let's say she's five feet off the background. Well, if you can take her 10 feet off the background, keep the same exposure on her, the background would, would drop by a quarter. Double the distance, a quarter of the exposure. So it would drop down four stops. And uh, so that would just really take your background and set it off. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's, uh, I love the composition. Uh, not thrilled with the hand up and the arm out to the side like that, but that's okay. I think I would probably maybe even try both hands across the top of the chair, uh, gracefully posed. Uh, that would maybe uh, run a little bit better or even uh, a hand alongside her head. Yeah, it just depends. But uh, check into the posing a little bit and then consider those, uh, those monotones. But nice job, a beautiful model. Okay, this is Nicole Elamo Moore. We've got more maternity, which is great. I wish that uh, we, we had more people and we need, uh, we need more folks. <laughs> anyway, getting over to it. I love the concept. This is kind of a traditional concept. And you usually have to have two people to pull this off because you got one on one side, one on the other to hold the, the material up and let it go and then you time the shot. I don't know what this is off here on camera left, whether that is a column or off the background or what, but if I'm wondering what it is, so is the client and so is the, the viewer. So I think if, it, if it's a column, you're gonna have to work at making it more distinct, otherwise uh, remove it from the background. Secondly, there is something happening uh, in the background right here on uh, camera right. And I am not again sure what it is, whether it is smoke, uh, whether it's gauze, I'm, I'm just not sure what it is, but it doesn't, in my sight, add to the symmetry of the image. I've enlarged it. Let's uh, take it up just a little bit larger and see if I can't figure out what it is. Okay, it looks like it's uh, a pattern on the wall. Then you're going to have to work with that wall a little bit. Consider that, uh, that pattern area. Whoops, let's go back the other way. Okay, and now one other thing that would help and you know another you know I understand the look I've photographed a lot of well not a lot of maternity but maternity I would and this is this is me but I would pose her turned a little bit to accent the size of her abdominal area white tends to all white there's no contrast there so you lose the shape of her body and turn her a little to the, the camera uh, left, and I think that would uh, really uh, snazz it up just a little bit. And this one is uh, John Bowser. John, you killed it, man. You just really, really killed it. Uh, maybe just a little bit higher arch on her head so that you would bring this area into the end of the light, but Man, it's, uh, it's smoking. Uh, you used your backlight very well. I love the fact that you put the sun behind the hat and uh, it just gives a feel to it. Then it's a cool uh, choice, a cool uh, color temperature. Uh, so she has, her skin tones are just a little on the cooler side, but uh, it's, uh, it's very well done. I can't think of anything that I would do short of maybe, maybe just adjusting it a little to the left to include this chair and backing up a little to give her more room under her foot. This is going to call for a, a strange uh, crop. Now, one thing that you can do if you want to change the distance between 
you know, as far as the distance on this side so that you could get more on the, on the page. Uh, in other words, shrink the bench. Believe it or not, let's uh, duplicate the layer, Control J. Uh, let's go to Marquee Tool. Let's take that Marquee Tool and let's draw it down to here and bring it over to right about there. Now you want Alt, Control, Shift, C. That brings out a content aware square. And now you're going to just bring this in a little. No, that's taking into consideration that you photographed it a lot wider than this. But what that will do for you is allow you, uh, we go there and control D to get rid of it. That will, uh, and let's uh, look over here and just drop this out. Okay, what that did was now you could shoot a little bit broader and you can include a little bit more of the chair. Now, this is something you would decide to do in post-production. You would say, when you're photographing this and your, your composition, uh, I want to want to shrink that bench a little bit so that the the bench is closer to uh, equal on both sides. It's just depending. I love the position of the model on the one third compositional line. So you know, use it if you can use it. Uh, use it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Very expressive model as well. You found a good model. Uh, she is. Uh, a full-figured lady, but she sure does know how to hit her, 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 uh, her poses. She knows how to strike her pose. There we go. And uh, Bill Thomas, uh, interesting photograph. One thing to remember, Bill, is that your lighting ratio between your uh, diffuse value, this value over here, the the main value, the main light and the shadow value. You're at that time of day where uh, you're starting to uh, lose light and it's getting darker. So now, what I would consider doing is using a wider aperture and a slower shutter speed. You can slow that shutter speed down, especially if you clamp down the tripod. You can slow that shutter speed down anywhere. And what that shutter speed will do, it won't affect the flash. The flash is gonna be uh, a uh, adjusted by the f-stop but the shutter speed will affect uh, the ambient light as well as the f-stop will affect the ambient light but you can keep the f-stop where it is but just drop the shutter speed it's called dragging the shutter drop that shutter speed down if it's at a 125th drop it down to uh, a 40th or, uh, or or clamp it down to a tripod and go down to 20th and what that will do is allow the ambient light to uh, fill in the shadows. Now, the only problem with that is that you lose this red and red light on the sunset. If you want to keep the red light on the sunset, and and you have to do that with the shutter speed to keep that that exposure that way, then try a reflector. It's it's a reflector time. It's time to pop a reflector up uh, and run it over on this side just to pump a little bit of light into the shadows. And Willie Demetrius Richardson, and Willie, you killed it again. It's really, really great. Now, there's one thing, one thing that uh, I'm gonna point out to you that you probably did not see. And uh, the, the great model, you're, you're one for getting these great looking models in the water. I, I don't know how you do it. You might be a scuba diver. You spend so much time in the water, brother. But uh, it is always good to see. I love the combination of the artificial light and uh, the natural light. The one place that could improve is this horizon. The horizon comes directly through the model's head. So you are really going to have to change the position uh, that you're in with the model. Uh, you're going to have to come 
a little farther down in the water, or a little farther down, camera down, dolly down. And if you come down some, you'll still have this wide expanse. You'll still place her on the one-third compositional line, but her head will go above the horizon, and the horizon will come through her shoulders rather than right through her head. Or you've got to go up and drop her head into the water, and the horizon above her head. I would prefer going the other way, so I'd just lower my camera angle a little bit and uh, give it a try. Uh, Love you guys. Great to be back again. Great to have you back. Stay tuned to Camera Artists. I'm gonna have another question up for you. And be sure to invite your friends to come join us. One last time, uh, if you're, you wanna have your images reviewed, simply make a comment in Camera Artists Guild group and post your photograph to that and I'll select one of five to do the critique. And we'll bring you a few tips as we go. Okay, you guys, take care.